I am not able to enlarge it to the full. Can I go ahead with this like this? Yes, maybe you can put play. Yeah, I'm... Um, okay. Is that okay? Yes, perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you for the invitation. Pleasure to uh, join all of you. And um, it's, uh, I'm from India and uh, it's a excellent topic to have a discussion with uh, very nice uh, faculties here. Uh, acute spinal cord injury and the ICU management. Uh, it's very interesting to, to go through that. And uh, uh, most of the spinal cord injuries are uh, very much cared only in the intensive care uh, unit. Um, so uh, if you look at, look at this intensive care of spinal cord injury patients, or very diverse in the worldwide due to global inequalities in economy, infrastructures, and availability of specialists. Uh, this is most important because um, when you look at the various managements um, from different countries, it varies from one country to another country. And so uh, we have to see as a total, and I found a very nice article uh, written by the anesthesiology groups who are taking care in the uh, critical care management in the United Kingdom. The management of acute spinal cord injury in non-specialist intensive care units, uh, a narrative review. So this was a very excellent uh, paper. And this summarizes, this is the, the flow chart of the, uh, the talk, uh, which I will go through and uh, I'll try to make it as smart, as, uh, as short as possible. The, the most important thing is the airway management. Uh, with the tracheal intubation, which is very important for all the spinal cord injury patients, particularly when it is associated with the brain injury. And when there is a respiratory failure, which is uh, about to be seen or you expect it so, then you need tracheal intubation, high cervical spinal cord injury, and also to facilitate a surgical intervention in acute period. So the tracheal intubation is very important and it has to be done as early as possible. The next thing is that about the intubation technique, which is very important, and we have to see that the cervical spine is not dislocated further and cause more impairment to the, the spinal cord injury. So the, uh, the technique is depending on the experience base uh, from the clinician and also assessed by for each case individually. Uh, this is a very important thing, uh, tracheal intubation and it's separate part altogether, but we should know as neurosurgeons, uh, we should know about it. Subsequent to uh, intubation is the tracheostomy. Tracheostomy is very important, uh, particularly in uh, very high grade, uh, complete quadriplegia, like Asia grade A and Asia grade B, cases which needs tracheostomy because they are going to be uh, in the critical care for a very long time. Injury at C5 and above. Obviously, the, the Center for Innovation, which of Renig now takes, is about the C4. So we all know about that patient will have uh, respiratory failure. Uh, increase injury severity, as I told earlier, and also when it is associated with uh, the brain injury, uh, with the Glasgow coma scale of 8 or below. When there is a thoracic injury associated, which is very commonly we see in a combination of head trauma, cervical trauma, and thoracic injury. So all these things uh, which needs uh, more care, finally, we have to treat these patients uh, with a tracheostomy. Then uh, it comes to the board, the ventilation strategies. Mechanical assist devices are very important with aggressive physiotherapy. The physiotherapy start, started from the time of the admission uh, of the patient inside the critical care unit with high tidal volumes of 15 to 20 m per kg and zero positive N expiratory pressure. PEEP is very important that need to be adjusted as needed. And when, whenever the strategy is made for ventilation, then there is also there's a plan for uh, weaning also. So this is very important. It is very difficult. And um, neurocritical care specialists 
they have a lot of uh, protocols uh, for for weaning process. Uh, apart from the ventilation, we come to the blood pressure because blood pressure is very important associated with hypotension. So the target mean arterial pressure must be approximately about eight to five millimeter of mercury MAP for five to seven days continuously to prevent hypoperfusion at injury site and prevent a secondary injuries. Euvolemia and vasopressors, particularly about noradrenaline, is very essential and that need to be titrated very well. Uh, there are so many things which at the research level is individualized perfusion and microdialysis, but they are not in practice at present in many places. Maybe in, in research centers, they are being practiced and maybe uh, research is being done on that. But most of the thing is done with euvolemia and vasopressors. The weaning of the ventilator after that is depending on so many factors. The weaning fails when it is, and it is defined as either the failure of spontaneous breathing trials or the need for reintubation within 48 hours following extubation if you do it very wrongly. So a simple weaning is completely different from difficult weaning and prolonged weaning. So these are the uh, aspects which we have to take in care while we treat the spinal cord injury patients. Weaning out also takes care of or takes takes the part of the respiratory weaning strategy, and the the strategy must be started with start in supine position and then in the sitting with abdominal binder, which is very essential, with the secretion clearance. So if you look at that, you know it's a combination of uh, not only uh, the the clinical practice but also with the nursing care. Uh, with secretion clearance. And the weaning out is uh, should be uh, aimed at vital capacity of 5.8 ml per kg, spirometry, ABG should be routinely taken up, patients should be afebrile, should not have any atelectasis, there should be a clear lung field and clear secretion management strategy. All these things are very necessary for weaning out uh, of these patients uh, from ventilation while the patient is being treated for spinal cord injury. And also the cuff deflation of the tricostomy is a big, uh, big, big challenge to many of the clinicians. So it is a very important thing to think about. Uh, that apart from that, the one point which we see is about autonomic uh, dysreflexia, though it is not very acute, but they do see in 5% of the cases in acute stage. Um, usually they may be associated with CVS with myocardial infarct atrial fibrillation, premature ventricular complexes, and AV conduction failures. Uh, as far as CNS is concerned, they may have a uh, CVA, headache, seizure, encephalopathy, sudden anxiety and apprehension, visual retinal detachments, blurred visions, and pulmonary edema. So it is a very, very uh, uncomfortable situation which needs a sit-up and loosening of the clots, uh, investigate and treat the precipitants. If the bladder is distended, you need to flush out the bladder, lead up in catheter, avoid rapid emptying, and check the testicular torsion in case if it is there. Fecal impaction, manual check, laxatives, evacuation, and check fissures. And pain is also an important subject, which I'll come to later with the pressure soles. Also carry a lot for auto autonomic dysreflexia, which you need to be taken care of. During this uh, time, that ACS score, has to be analyzed every uh, you know period of time to assess the patient is improving or not. So this has to be standardized all over the um, ICU management. To come to the pharmacology where the pharmacology is absolutely not being um, you know be taken out of spinal cord injury, uh, it's a big controversy because it is being going through since 1960. Uh, methyl prednisolone was being uh, advocated in an earlier period, and then NASIS three came out with intravenous MPSS, about 30 milligram per kilogram body weight in the first 15 minutes, followed by 45 minutes of pause, and then 5.4 milligram kilogram of body weight for the next 23 hours. So this is the uh, the concept which came in in the recent Green Book. And this Green Book's uh, book has also has mentioned very interesting point. I would like to come to that a little bit later uh, about methylprednisolone. So the world is divided whether to use methylprednisolone or not. As, as in this uh, article, you can see this article has seen the results up to 26 weeks and they found that they did not have any demonstrate 
any enhancement in the neurological recovery. So it is being found that it is not very useful. And this is a Korean uh, journal uh, article which came very recently, tried to say that no, no, we should not use MPSS and we should encourage others to stop it. So there are so many papers which are coming like this, articles. But however, you know, we have Michael. Michael is uh, is going to talk to next. And they did uh, the very elaborate study. And 2017, they come forward with a very beautiful, uh, uh, this one, you can see that here, when the take is comes about, they offer to adults, if they come between less than eight hours of injury, and you can give a 24 hours infusion as an option. So this was given by Michael's group. And subsequently, we came from uh, WFN Spine Committee, and uh, we came with the consensus that selected young patients with no comorbidity should be given the opportunity with methylprednisolone. So the world is divided in so many ways. And another another paper which came so recently with, uh, by Winchen Chong, and they said that that we are not only seeing about a grade zero quadriplegia that is a complete spinal cord injury. We also have to think about the incomplete spinal cord injury patients, uh, whether uh, MPSS is useful in those conditions. That is another one. And finally, there's a very big paper on this. They analyzed the guidelines, which included our paper, our work in WFN Spine Committee, and also Michael's article is also here. And they came with the conclusion. Uh, they were inconsistent. They were inconsistency in the recommendations of methylprednisolone. The evidence-based recommendations tended to recommend against using MPSS, whereas when you do have a consensus-based recommendation, they tend to recommend for. So that is what the reason Greenberg book has written, saying that 56% of their question as uh, consultants have agreed to use MPSS. So it is divided. Now, now uh, just a case, a case example here. Here is a patient who came in the recently with a spinal cord injury here, you can see came with uh, incomplete, looks like incomplete with upper limb one by five, lower limb by three by five. And this patient was given with MPSS as per NASS3, uh, the, 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 the dosage. And then for reasons, for some reasons that they, they had to be taken the surgery after four days. And uh, this patient is, okay. uh, is actually doing well. You know, uh, good, good. <laughs> now we do not know uh, where where exactly to put uh, this patient in line. How are you? Whether this uh, the so, decompression has done the work, or the methylprednisolone has done the work, or it is the incomplete has done the work. But finally, as human beings, we have to think about it. That we have to give the benefit to the to the to the patients, whoever is fit whoever is uh, eligible that without any comorbidity. So that is very important uh, in, in, in concepts of one cannot have a blanket uh, say no to MPSS. Uh, MPSS can be given in select cases when the patients are very young, when there is no comorbidity and no other injuries, isolated spinal cord injury. They do very well. Here you can see in the post of MRI, you can see the healing has happened very nicely, decompression, spinal cord, very beautiful, and there is a small vacuole that shows that the patient had a contusion here. It's not just a concussion that he came back. So there was a spinal cord injury there, uh, but maybe it was incomplete at that point of time. The other point which I would like to emphasize is the venous thromboembolism, which is seen at least 8% of the patients in spinal cord injury in ICU. The low molecular weight has to be started within 48 hours, and it is recommended very strongly to continue for eight to 12 weeks. That is two to uh, three months. Pain is a dis very, very disturbing for the patient, both acute and chronic. Uh, so the musculoskeletal, it is with, uh, due to the coexisting injuries, immobility and instability of the spine can cause severe pain. So one need to have a multimodal approach for that. Surgery, if needed, as uh, our previous speaker said, that surgery needed, it has to be uh, done. Peripheral nerve block, paracetamols, NSAIDs, and titrated opiates can be given. The visceral, the visceral pain also maybe have to be seen very carefully because of urinary tract infection, constipation. This has to be taken care of in the ICU. The neuropathy pain, which is about in 56% of the patients, 
Uh, this can be at the level of injury or below the injury. Amitriptyline, pregabalin, gabapentin, and duloxetine, they are some of the medications along with anti-anxiolytics and antidepressants are very useful in reducing the pain uh, because it is very, very discomfort when a patient has a pain with the neurological deficit. This also should be taken care in the critical care uh, patient in the ICU. Pain specialists will be of very great helpful in these patients. Finally, we have the rehabilitation, which needs the management of spasticity, the patient psychology, the mood, communication with the patients and relatives, readiness for discharge for to rehabilitation, and then we need to prognosticate the patient. Um, I, th I thank you for uh, listening to my talk. Uh, finally, I would like to say one point. Uh, ICU is the important place uh, that apart from our surgical, uh, our skill, but ICU is the one place where it is going to change uh, the patient's um, complete outcome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Partiban, for your excellent presentation. So we continue with uh, Professor Michael Fellings uh, speaking on early versus late surgery. Professor? Uh, and unmute your, your your microphone, Professor, please. You you need to do this. Oh, there we go. And I submitted a, a video. So are we able to play the video? Will that work? Yes. Abuja, can you please make it? Abuja? Are you there? Yes, I'm here. Uh, I'm trying to share. Will you please uh, uh, make the video of Dr. Felix? 